Hi, this is um, another lecture regarding the history of the Philippine education system. So, in our lecture, we actually have two objectives that I would like you to achieve. The first one is for you to understand deeply the different periods of the Philippine education that we had went through, okay? And so in our history, you can see the changes that happened in the different era or the different regimes when the different colonizers of our country came here in the Philippines. So first, I have um, a very important question for you. The first question is, I just wonder, did your country's history influence your current education system. So did uh, what happened in your country in the past influence the way on how your country shaped your education system these days? Well, I would like you to answer that one on your own. In the Philippines, we actually have our history of governance. So the Philippine actually education went through different stages before it actually reached the current education that we actually have these days. So you can actually see the different periods that we had gone through. We had the pre-Spanish period. It means pre because it was before the Spanish came here in the Philippines. The second one was during the Spanish period. It was actually when they colonized the Philippines. And after the Spaniards or the Spanish colonizers, it was actually the American regime or the American period. And during the time, we're going to see also how they actually influenced the Philippines education system. Okay. And the fourth one, the fourth colonizers that we had was the Japanese. So you can see the changes that happened, the transitions that happened from pre-Spanish, Spanish, American, the Japanese, until we got our own independence or our own republic. And when we also had our martial law and last time, which is the Philippine Republic. So based on this seven stages that we have, I will be discussing to you in detail the different aims, what was taught, and the different teachers who actually handled the Filipinos during this time. So these are the things that you're going to learn. Uh, you're going to see why the aims of the education during the period that we're going to discuss. And the second one are the things or the subjects which were actually taught during the time. And the third one are actually the method or approach on what these colonizers or the different teachers used during that period. So let's start from the pre-Spanish period. So this was actually before the 1500s. So you can see here in the picture how they actually look like in the past. Now the aim during this time, during the before the Spanish came here in the country, is actually for survival and conformity. How? What did they do? So they actually learn how to do hunting and farming so that they can survive in the past. And the second one is to promote reverence for, and of course, adoration for Bathala. Bathala is a kind of like a god that people in the past used to worship. It could be somewhat um, related to nature, okay? Something that they treat as someone who is divine during the time. And the third aim of the pre-Spanish period was the respect for laws, customs, and authorities, which were actually represented by the parents and the elderly, okay? So these were actually the aims of the pre-Spanish period. Now, this time, 
What do you think were the subjects which were taught? Obviously, since they did not have any academic subjects during the time, the things that they actually learn are things or skills that they need to survive, such as practical skills, domestic chores like cooking, okay, farming, something that they can do inside also the house, okay, and some moral, and of course, as I have told you earlier, something very important, which is somewhat spiritual, or the adoration of Bathala. And the teaching methods during the time were the tell me and show me. It is actually through observation and imitation. Now, who are the teachers during this time? So since we actually do not have any um, academic okay, or professional teachers during the pre-Spanish period, the teachers were usually the parents or tribal teachers and, of course, the elders. Okay, So that is actually how it looks like during or before the Spanish period. And as you can see, okay, this one is actually our Baybayin writing system. It is actually, when the Spaniards arrived in the Philippines, they actually encountered islanders who knew how to read and write using our alibata. So this was actually how our alphabet looked like during the past. And just like the other countries in the past, one way on how they actually passed the tradition is by means of oral tradition. And of course, some, some are also so through writing using the Baybayin writing system. So that is basically how it looks like before the Spanish era. And this time, when the Spanish period came, that was before 1521, the aim of the education during the time is uh, teaching of Christianity. One thing that the Spaniards influenced the Philippines or the Filipinos is actually when it comes to religion. Okay, so the teaching of Christianity was actually very strong then until now. And another aim was the promotion of the Spanish culture and of course of the language. So frankly speaking, our language, Filipino, is influenced by the Spanish language. And until now, there are actually still many loan words in our language which are actually being used in our country. And, of course, the third aim of the Spanish period or the Spanish education was for them to teach the Spanish culture. Okay, so that was really, really strong back then during that time. Now... The next one are the things which were taught very importantly. These two things are actually theatrical plays or theatrical performances. The first one is actually called as Moro Moro. Moro Moro is actually a comedic play portraying the battles between the Moros, the Muslims, and the Christians. And actually in this play, usually the Christians are the ones who usually win. And the second theatrical performance is the cold S or pronounced as cenaculo or sinaculo. It is actually done in singing and recitation. It actually illustrates the crucifixion of Christ. And usually they actually show what happened or it's actually done during the Holy Week. So these two theatrical performances were actually very importantly played during this time. Now, what are the subjects being taught during this time? Importantly, during the Spanish regime or period, grammar, literature, and history, um, in addition to mathematics and philosophy, were just some of the subjects being taught in addition to industrial and agricultural techniques. In addition to that, the teaching methods which were used uh, during the Spanish era 
was usually teacher-centered and subject-centered subjects. So it was actually I or the teacher should be followed during the time. And usually during the time, they usually do dictation and memorization of very important details, okay, whenever they are learning something. Now, this time, if you're going to ask me who the teachers are, to who the teachers were, the teachers were actually the friars themselves. They were actually the priest, okay? And they were actually the ones in charge in teaching the Filipinos, most of the Filipinos, during the time. And for those who are actually rich, okay, and for those who are actually called as the Illustrados, these people, okay, including our national hero, Illustrados actually means learn or enlightened ones. We have here Dr. Jose Rizal. We also have uh, Mariano Ponce and Marcelo H. Del Pilar in this picture. These are just some of the well-known Illustrados during this time. So these three people are actually, uh, were, actually, they actually belong to the European educated middle class Filipinos during the Spanish colonial period. So these people who actually have money, they actually studied in other countries. And one of them, as I've told you earlier, our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, he's actually called as, as San Ilustrados. And he was actually against the Spanish um, who invaded or colonized our country. And he actually wrote two of the most important books in our history, which are No Limitangere and El Ferito Busterismo, which actually exposed to the world the injustices, okay, which were imposed on Filipinos during the Spanish colonial period. So that was actually our education during the time. Now, if you're going to see, okay, I would like you to compare and check clearly these two pictures. So you can see here our alphabets. Okay, we have the Spanish alphabet and we also have the Filipino alphabet. You can see there are actually some similarities and differences in our alphabets, right? Such as in the Spanish alphabet, they actually have CH. However, in our Filipino alphabet, we only have C. Okay, so these are just some of the similarities and differences of our letters. So some of the Filipino names that we have, they still use uh, the letters of the Spanish alphabet. For instance, Ñ, letter N with something on top. So you can see on the Spanish alphabet. Some Filipino names still use that letter until the present. Okay. Now, after the Spaniards, okay, uh, after the Spanish regime, it was followed by actually the American regime. But before that, these friars that we have here in the picture are actually uh, the ones who establish parochial schools in our country. And usually during the Spanish era, uh, the instruction was in Spanish or Latin. That's the reason why some of uh, the old generation, our grandparents can still speak uh, Spanish because they actually were taught the language. They actually have to use the language. And one of the official languages that they have to use during the time was Spanish. So it's one of the languages that they have to learn in their generation. And another one, the friars actually manage, supervise, and control the education in our country during the time. And the system of schooling was neither hierarchical nor structured. Or nor structured. Thus, during the time, there were actually no grade levels. So there was no first grade, second grade. Everybody was actually just the same during the Spanish period. Okay, so you can see here the ones that I've told you in detail. Now, 
Let's move on to the American period or to the American regime. It was actually from 1898 to 1946. During this time, the aim of the American education was to promote democratic ideals and way of life. And so they actually train us for self-government and they actually emphasize the use of English as a common language. So Spanish was still there because it was not easy, of course, to not use the language. The um, Spanish colonized us for 333 years, so our ancestors were already using Spanish then. And aside from that, English was already started to be used as a common language by the Filipinos in that era. So you can imagine, the Filipinos during the time, they were already using many foreign languages in my country, Spanish and English. Now, what were the subjects taught? Uh, GMRC, which is similar to your ethics in your country. We, they also learned, they started learning some academic subjects too, like civics, hygiene and sanitation, which is very important, geography, and they already started learning grammar and composition of the English language. Now, the government started to establish normal school for the future, and the teachers practice teaching, they already practice, they already started teaching psychology, mathematics, language, science, history, history, and other academic subjects. Now, what were the methods used? During the American regime, they, they started to, or they actually already started introducing us the philosophy of John Dewey, which is learning by doing. They actually started using the democratic way of teaching little by little, and they depend what they teach, depending, of course, on the level of the students. Now, in the American regime, the teachers were actually the American soldiers. They were actually the first teachers. And the other teachers were actually the Thomasites. They were actually missionaries brought to the Philippines to help in educating the Filipinos during the time. And why are they called Thomasites? You will know in the next one. They're actually called Thomasites because of the ship, okay, that carried the American soldiers. The name of the ship is actually USS Thomas. That's why the teachers or the missionaries who were riding in that ship or who were in that ship were actually called as Thomasites. And during the American regime, this is actually one of the best thing under their colony. Uh, we actually had some pensionados. These are actually outstanding Filipino scholars who were sent to the United States to train as teachers and then come back here in the Philippines and then teach the Filipinos what they have learned in the United States. So at that time, they already started encouraging Filipino in the field of teaching, right? So since they send these pensionados in America when they come back, they also let these pensionados teach other Filipinos. And of course, they trained these teachers too to replace the soldiers as teachers. Now, after the American regime in our history came the Japanese, okay. As you can see, the Japanese period was only from 1941 to 1944. So if you're going to, if you're going to check how many years, it was only for around three years, right? However, uh, in your country, they actually stayed longer than us. Um, the Americans stayed here in the Philippines for around 48 years. The Spaniards stayed here in the Philippines for around 333 years, whereas the Japanese stayed here in the Philippines for around three years. 
until the World War II was finished. Now, during this time, one of the aims of the Japanese period was to remove the old idea of reliance upon the Western states because in the past, we were colonized by the Americans and the Spaniards. And the second aim was to elevate the moral of the people, giving up overemphasis on materialism. So in their case, we have to be more practical, okay, during the time. And they tried to diffuse the elementary education and promote the uh, importance of vocation education. So vocation education are, is a kind of like um, educating the Filipinos on what really matters, on what they really need. So vocation is a kind of like um, skill, okay? They need to learn a skill, a practical skill, that they can use in order for them to survive, okay? And of course, the most important one, the most important aim of the Japanese period is to study their own language. So, wow, you can imagine, right? The Filipinos back then, they speak foreign languages such as Spanish. And after that, the Americans came and then they asked us to use their own language. And then the Japanese came and then they asked us to use again their own language. So for sure, people back then were confused, okay, of the languages that they use. Fortunately, these languages that we acquired or we actually got or uh, we actually got from them, it was actually very helpful for us until now. Okay, so if you're going to ask me what were the subjects taught during this time, since they were on vacation education, their emphasis, they actually taught um, agriculture, medicine, and of course, fisheries. Fisheries, why? Obviously, because of the geographical location of the Philippines. And of course, one important thing which was taught is the use of Japanese culture and language. Okay. Now, the history actually of education in my country is actually very, you know, it changes from time to time. Now, there are some strong points and there are also some negative points. However, the changes may be, there are also some common things okay, that we actually have, that we were actually influ influenced by this country. So I would like to ask you this question. Based on the lectures that I have given you, what do you think is the common factor in education during the Spanish, American, and the Japanese regime. Were you able to take down note on that one? Okay. That's for you to think about. Okay. I hope you are able to get the common points of these three colonizers in the Philippines. Now, moving on, the next part is about the period of Republic. It was from 1946 to 1972 when we actually got our independence after World War II. Independence from these uh, foreigners, okay, our colonizers. So the aims were for uh, our education to inculcate moral and spiritual values, develop an enlightened, patriotic, useful, and upright citizenry in a democratic society. So loving our own country, okay, in a free country just like the Philippines. And then another thing that they emphasize is the conservation of our natural resources, national resources. Philippines actually is very rich when it comes to our natural resources. We actually, since our island is very, very big, the Philippines, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, we actually try to conserve our natural resources so that we can actually use them, okay, or we can actually have them as our present, okay? Next one is the promotion of science, arts, and, of course, letters. So these were just some of the aims 
of the Republic. Okay. Now, what was taught during this time was the skills needed for the jobs in a democratic nation building. They actually want to inculcate in us the belief of having a democratic country. So just additional information during this time. Community school and the use of vernacular in the first two grades of the primary schools is actually used as the medium of instruction. Vernacular is the language or the native language being used in a certain region. I have given you a lecture about the Philippine overview so you have realized or you have learned that the Philippines uses many languages, right? So during the time it was allowed for them to use their own language in educating the Filipinos. Now during the martial law, the martial law was actually when uh, former president Ferdinand Marcus okay, was the president. It was from 1972 to 1986. It was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was also the period of civil war in Korea. So during this time, the aim of education in my country was to use bilingual education scheme. So they actually emphasized us to use Filipino already in English or Tagalog in English or two languages in teaching a certain subject. Okay, so the emphasize the usage of two languages is very important in comprehending and at the same time learning another language. Another one is to foster love, still same, patriotism, or teach the duties of citizenship and develop moral character. Okay, and the third one is a provision for a broad or wider kind of education and manpower training and middle level skills. So these were actually the aims of the martial law and during the time uh, there were actually uh, many, many things that happened. Okay, however, one, if I'm not mistaken, one of the best things that, that we actually had during the time was the usage of the bilingual education scheme. Okay, and after that, when the president was changed from 1986 onwards, we now have the Philippine Republic. And the aim of our education at the time was the emphasis of three R's, which are reading, writing, and arithmetic. So the cognitive effective based curriculum or in values education was also emphasized during this time, focusing on the development of humanism and Filipinism in all learning areas. So if you're going to look at our education system, the history of our education system, it keeps on changing every now and then until even after we got our own independence. Okay, so just um, a very quick view on how we actually, um, on how our education system looks like before and now. In the past, the 2000 B so we call this one as basic education curriculum. You can see from below going down, okay. Preschool before was actually optional. In other words, um, they can or cannot go to the kindergarten or to the preschool. However, these days in our new curriculum, the K-12 curriculum, uh, the going to preschool is mandatory, which means they need to or they have to go to the preschool. So all who are five years old before they go to elementary. And you can see from grades one to grade six is actually the same from uh, the past and these days. However, the differences comes in when we go to the next level. Okay, so in the past, we only have high school, which is four years of education. However, these days, they actually believe that following the K-12 curriculum would be very helpful for the graduates, which is the reason why they added two more years in our basic education system. So we have now grade 7, 8, 9, 10, which is called as junior high school in the Philippines. And we have uh, grades 11 and 12, 
which is called as the senior high school in the Philippines. So if you're going to compare these two, in the past we used to have around 10 years of basic education system, but these days we have around 12 years. I'm going to discuss this one in detail in um, the last lecture that we're going to give for you so that you can understand deeply what happened in our Philippine education system. Okay, so this one is just an overview. Now to just a short recap, okay, so just a short recap of what we had been discussing. All of the foreign country who actually has set foot in the Philippines, Spain, America, Japan, okay, actually they have left mark and helped shape the education that we actually have today most specifically or most dominantly by the americans in the next part of our lecture i'm going to discuss to you i'm going to compare the pros and cons of the different colonizers on how they actually affected the Philippine education system. So watch out for it, okay? Thank you.